Greetings fellow adventurers, my name is Vizu Deahain and welcome to the evolution of power armor. Every mark from 1 to 10, Warhammer 40k lore in 20 minutes, which is actually 18 and 47 seconds, by Arbiter Ian. A channel I never checked out before and somebody recommended that I should watch this video to understand power armors in Warhammer because I'm watching so many Warhammer lore videos and I don't know much about power armor and stuff, so let's do this. The only thing I know is that... Um, there was one with like a big shaped helmet. I, what was that one called? Was it Mark 5 or was it 6? Or was it 4? I don't remember. <laughs> and, um, you know, during the heresy or something like something of the sort. Again, I don't really know lore. I'm just saying some things I vaguely remember. I'm probably wrong about like how that one was supposed to be delivered, but cut, like, supply lines, like supply lines were cut. And by the time it was like, available, they switched to like the next generation anyway. That looks like normal instead of big black helmet and blah blah blah. Anyway, let's go and watch this. Hi gang. One of the most iconic images of Warhammer 40k is the power Space armor. Marine clad in power armor. The yes. highly advanced futuristic plate armor available to warriors of the Imperium and you- Wait, that is a, that's a Primaris. Because that's one thing I know. Armor. The highly- Wait. That's one thing I know that you can determine primaries by their little like that part of the the, the knee pads, the the sticking out part, the sharp sticking out part. If they have that, they are primaries. Advanced futuristic plate armor available to warriors of the Imperium and used not only by the Space Marines but also by the Sisters of Battle, the Custodes, the Sisters of Silence. And Even some rogue traders sometimes get power armor for themselves. And many more. But what exactly yeah. is power armor in 40k? And how has that silhouette we're too. so familiar with evolved over the 10,000 years it's Why been? Why the lot? Somebody explained to me this whole thing, this, this thing when I called it a, a BDSM looking armor in some video at some point. I said it, I said it basically looks like a BDSM armor with a speaker in the middle. Power armor! So power armor is one of the most effective and advanced forms of armor used by warriors of the Imperium. In also, didn't it start by being like a space mining thing before that? Like before the space mornings even existed, like long in the past of humanity, maybe during the dark age of technology or something, the original like kind of power armor thing, wasn't it just supposed to be for like space mining and things like that? Um... I'm not sure if that's fanon or canon. I, I know I've seen it in a lower video, like at some point. Okay. Over its millennia long history, there have been loads of different styles, marks, and variants created for use by the giant genetically engineered soldiers of the Astartes or Custodes. Or I know the Custodes are made from a material that's so like hard to get and stuff that it, that's why you know this like very rare to make. Or for more human-sized warriors, it's very like valuable. the Sisters of Battle. But all these different marks have a few things in common. At its core, Imperial Power Armor is plate armor, a suit of armored plates drilled into place around the wearer. These plates are usually constructed from layers of ceramite, an extremely tough ceramic material used by the Imperium as both the source of armor and for military construction, and that's particularly uh -huh. good at absorbing energy and heat-based attacks. Each of the plates that make it up is formed from layers and layers of ceramite, which- The Groin Guard! <laughs> Though there's so many names for so many things. Just look at them. The Gord how do you say that? Gord Gord the Gorget? Gorget Gorge? How do you say that? I do not know. How many things? Yeah. Which may be constructed over something else, like an adamantium or plasteel base, or sometimes made from something completely different, like the Auramite armor used by the Adeptus Custodes. Very but rare. Ceramite is the standard and results in an extremely durable and very heavy suit of armor. It's basically made of stone. Power armor suits can weigh hundreds of kilos. But this weight is offset by the systems that give the armor its name. Each suit is built over a layer of electrically motivated fiber bundles that mimic the wearer's own muscle movement. They are? I did not know that. That looks like the, the middle one. Okay, listen here. The middle one looks exa like, not exactly, but very close to the, the, the nano suit from the Crisis games. It looks like the, 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 the design of it is so similar. Usually by means of some interface with the wearer's nervous system. Also, I had no idea that it looks like that under. I really, there was a time in the past when I really thought that it's, it's just simply armor, just simply normal metal armor. And even though it's so heavy, 
just because the space marines are so strong compared to normal human, they can carry it without any problem. I used to think that in the past. Not only did. do these fiber bundles help move the colossal suit of armor, but they also but this amplify makes so much more the wearer's sense. own muscle strength, enabling them to hit with more force in close combat, become a more stable firing platform for heavier ah. weapons, or even just move faster. The armor then comes with its own generator to power all this, often in the form of a backpack. That's what the backpack is for! I, I never knew that! I kept wondering what it's for. In my head, I never—I don't, I don't think I ever said it out loud. Like, what is what is with the backpack? I don't think I did, but it, I was wondering what it is. Even at this basic level, power armor is extremely complex. And okay, I mean, I my own theory in my head was that it was supposed to be for like life support, actually, because I know that usually things in this universe have like like, like life support to them. I just thought it was that actually, but I guess it's actually a power, a battery for the suit. And ridiculously expensive, well out of the Maybe reach the suit of most has imperial life support, citizens. Like, and so it it's anyway. usually confined to elite or extremely well-funded military forces, or special operatives like Inquisitors, whose power-armored suits oh. are often custom builds just for them. But as well as these sophisticated defensive technologies, power armor also includes lots of auxiliary systems. It's common for suits to be environmentally sealed for oh, operation there we go. in hospitable environments or in the void to contain sophisticated respirators and filtration systems or their own air supply, there we go, as there well we as go. protective visors, flash suppressors, or audio dampeners for better operation under battlefield conditions. Wait, the, the Emperor's children that like the new ones, the mutated ones, use sonic weaponry. Do they have ones that are so strong that can bypass these, or is it just not as, not as, like, uh, as effective on space marines as normal people? Suits often also include auto sensors, advanced augurs and scanners, heads up displays, night or infrared vision capabilities, suites of tactical communication equipment, and. Do you think the uh, Do you think a space marine can kill a prophet from crisis? Because that's what is pretty impressive too. Like you can have a car, a literal car, fall on you and just throw it off like it's nothing. So that's pretty impressive too. And take damage from shots, even though the shots in this universe, like the bolter shots for example, are rocket propelled and they explode on impact, so that's more than the the Prophet guy ever got, I think. I'm, I mean, he did deal with aliens though, so maybe not. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Because of that thing from before with the armor, it made me think of Crisis now, and I'm just curious how, would he, like, how that guy would fare against Space Marine. Automatic threat detection systems. The different power armored suits or, like, used by the aliens in the Warhammer Imperium might be of very different specifications, including some or none of the above equipment, but the pinnacle of Imperial power armor is probably the various marks developed for the use of the Space Marines. Oh, they have names. <gasps> it was only at Mark 7 that they started using the Aquila pattern? Really? The Thunder Armor looks so like, close to the normal ones. I did not think they were actually that close. I thought it looked more barbaric or something. I mean, it's kind of weird because, like, for example, Mark 7 looks more barbaric and older to me than Mark 1 does. Actually, Mark 1 looks, like, in terms of looks alone, looks more sophisticated to me than probably all the ones all the way up to, I don't know, Mark 4? Maybe, I don't know. It, it, I, don't, I don't know. Space Marine power armor at least more is than a Mark colossal six or seven construction or whatever, or five, whatever designed it was. to keep its occupant operating at peak efficiency for as long as possible and to enhance the prodigious abilities of the Space Marines inside it. As well as much heavier plating than other patterns, Space Marine power armor includes medical sensors and injection systems. It carries on board high density nutrient stores to sustain the Space Marine within, and oh, even wow. has sophisticated waste filtration and recycling systems. A Space Marine can operate for months at a time without needing to remove the armor. I'll leave the implications of that to you. The armor <laughs> so the, al the armor recycles your. the things you, you know, would. Expel from your body like poop and pee and sweat and things like that, huh? It recycles it's it. It's completely void sealed and its greaves and boots include mag locks to allow the wearer to fight in zero gravity environments. But ah. the biggest technological advantage Space Marine power armor has is actually within the Marine themselves. The final implant given to new Space Marines as they graduate the scout companies is the Black Carapace an organic, fibrous material that sits under the skin of the Marine's torso and meshes with his nervous system. 
Along with the numerous connection points implanted across his chest, back and arms, this means that the Marine's connection to his armour is much more sophisticated than other forms of power armour, behaving almost like a second skin and allowing him much more natural movement within it. The science used to create all this is a- I thought it was something else, I've seen Lutin's video about like Space Marine creation recruitment, and didn't he explain it like basically their they're like uh their ribs changing shape and stuff and forming like an armor on the inside you're telling me it was it's actually like an implant instead of some sort like some actual like mesh that you put under their skin and stuff what ancient and has its roots in the dark age of technology where mankind spread out amongst the stars various stcs from that period managed to survive the following age of strife whether in the form of the sophisticated exo armor used by the leagues of votan or the much simpler devolved powered suits used by knights of the order on caliban and remnants of those technologies could be found on Terra itself, predating the rise of the Imperium, like in the ironclad regiments of old Albia. As the Emperor started to unify the planet in the 31st millennium, these technologies were adopted and improved upon by his scientists for use in the Imperial armies, notably uh -huh. by the Legio Custodes, the Emperor's elite bodyguard, and the Legiones Cataigis, the thunder warriors that formed the spear tip of his army of unity. Okay, it looks a lot worse here than it did in in the preview you showed before about all the power armors, <laughs> there's looks a lot more barbaric here now. And it would be maybe it's the paint job. <laughs> maybe the paint job really makes a big difference in the way they Their look. Their armor, thunder armor, that formed the first mark of power armor adapted for use by their replacements, the Space Marines of the Legiones Astartes. These suits, retroactively designated Mark I, were simple by comparison to the later marks of Space Marine armor. Thunder armor consisted of an extremely heavily armored ceramite torso section powered by an auxiliary backpack supported by more conventional, often unpowered, armor on the legs. The fiber bundles in the top half of the armor gave the wearers using it immense upper body strength, apparently useful in the close quarters bloodbaths that were the Unification Wars, but the suits weren't fully enclosed and didn't have many of the life support functions of later armors, stuff that just wasn't as necessary when the fighting was confined to ancient terror. This sort of armor would have been used in various idiosyncratic local patterns by the early- See what I mean, like in this image it looks a lot more modern than it does in the actual other images. <laughs> the of the Space Marine Legions deployed at the end of the unification- I'm really upset. <laughs> Be not because of that, I mean because I have an energy drink and for some reason exactly the part where you drink, like where you drink from is bent. I do not know what happened and how I did not notice that when I bought it, because it did not happen after. I'm sure of that. It was just in the fridge the whole time. So, um, somehow, exactly that part is bent, and then it's kind of, it makes me, like, reluctant of drinking Wars. because of that. But as the Emperor unified the solar system and made alliances with Mars, Imperial and Martian scientists started work on a replacement, something that better suited what the Astartes were created to do. Mark II armor, known as Crusade armor, was the first true space marine power armor, developed by the Mechanicum in the forges of Mars and issued to the growing Astartes legions as the Great Crusade got underway. Crusade armor was a fully enclosed suit, void sealed and with full life support capabilities and with all of the auto senses and auxiliary medical systems that would become standard over the years to come. It was fully powered, including the legs, and exposed cabling was minimized, moved behind the main breastplate or to the back of the leg armor. The placement of power cabling was a major concern for every mark of the armor and would be solved in various different ways over the years. The suit itself was constructed of hooped sections which gave much greater maneuverability than the other. Actually that's one thing I really like um, whenever it comes to stuff like this that is the one thing I always like worry about and care about and I'm interested about the, like the technicalities of how it works and like how things were changed like for example when it comes to the second one when it comes to the cablings and stuff like that did it ever happen for it to malfunction? Did it ever happen for it to like, for parts of it to like not work? For parts of it to like behave strangely? On, or like, I, I'm, I'm very curious about the error rate and the uh, implications of it being like damaged or how it performed over durations of time and how things upgraded and things like that. 
I love stuff like that. Thunder Armor, at the cost of being slightly more difficult to maintain and repair, and being much heavier, the backpack generator was made much more efficient to power all this. This was the standard mark of power armor used by the legions at the start of the Great Crusade, and the distinctive ah. helmet with its mono-slip visor became a symbol for the Astartes across the galaxy. By the time of the Horus Heresy, it was technically outdated by newer marks, but many legions and companies still made use of it. It was still they widely did? considered one of the most efficient patterns of armor available at the time, despite How? being a bit more difficult to maintain. My How was it still used if it's like if there's so many more up to that point. Pontu was in use for so long that it spawned a load of variants. Most legions had their own variant designs and patterns, but one of the more common variants is what would become known as Mark III, Iron Armor. Mark III is a development of Mark II armor invented early in the Crusade in an attempt to make a heavier form of protection for full-on frontal assaults. What about Mark II? Wait, <laughs> what am I saying? We just talked about it. I don't know, I, I got so confused because of the fact that, you know, we talked about the Thunder Warriors, and I was like, oh yeah, Thunder Warriors, their armor. And for some reason when we talked about the first Space Marines, I was like, oh, P Mark 1, because it's the, fir the, it's the first Space Marine, so it's Mark 1. But no, Thunder Warriors had Mark 1. The, the Space Marines had Mark 2, and now we're going to Mark 3. Early in the Crusade, in an attempt to make a heavier form of protection for full-on frontal assaults, Iron Armor added additional plating over the top of the Mark II's hoops and replaced the helmet with a new design with a sloped faceplate to deflect incoming fire. This additional armor was mostly oriented towards the front, and while it made the suit heavier, less efficient, and less maneuverable, it was perfect for the brutal boarding assaults it was designed for. While it was originally considered too clumsy and uncomfortable for general issue, most legions still used some form of iron armor, often assigned to breacher teams, and some of the more direct legions, like the Death Guard or Imperial Fists, favored ah. it, enough that the variant was officially des- I'm surprised the Salamanders don't use it because they are like bulky big boys. ...to Mark III, and was seen pretty commonly alongside Mark II as the Great Crusade pushed on. And as the Crusade pushed on, various fragments of lost technologies and STCs were rediscovered, and the development of power armor continued. Towards the middle of the Crusade, the Mechanicum started work on a replacement, a new version of power armor for general issue to the legions. This new Mark IV armor, named Maximus armor, was the most technologically advanced so far, making use of newly discovered systems and materials. The new suit removed the large abutted plates of previous marks in favor of form-fitting plates linked with flexible joint sections, marginally less maneuverable than the old Mark II, but much easier to produce and repair. The armor quality was improved, offering greater protection despite the suit itself being lighter. The newly armored power cables were moved back to the outside of the plate, and the suit had a much more efficient and smaller backpack generator. Mark IV was intended to be the final form of power armor required it by the was. legions, and oh, most legions were at least partially reissued with it, but by the time of- I mean, I kind of- I like the way it looks. When it comes, okay, let me see something. I like the way it looks, per se. I do. But again, I, I'm not exactly the biggest fan of that. <laughs> it just, I know it's not BDSM gear, but it does remind me of it. <laughs> and required by the legions. And most legions were at least partially reissued with it, but by the time of... And I especially hate the, like these kind of things when they stick out like that. I like when it's clean and like smooth. Actually, I like when it has like other layers on top of it too, on top of that, not only smooth. But I don't like these, these kind of patterns. With the Horus Heresy, the reissue wasn't complete, and some legions even preferred the previous heavier version to this new, more efficient one. But it was still- Oh, it was the Mark IV! Oh, that's the one. That's the one? Wait, that's the one I, I think I wanted to talk about before, but I said maybe a different one by mistake. One oh. of the more common armor marks seen across the legions, especially amongst traitor legions, since Horus as Warmaster was able to somewhat control supply lines, and it's still one of the Okay, so it is this one. This is the one that was actually the one I wanted to talk about before. Most common of the older marks seen in the 41st millennium, with some chapters still favoring it over the later ones. The Horus Heresy then pushed the development of power armor down a number of different directions. At the outbreak of the war, the legions were equipped with a mix of Mark IV and Mark III armor and some Mark II suits, but as the war ground on and armor was destroyed or worn out, the legions were forced into using stopgap designs or combining parts in unorthodox ways. These ad hoc suits could vary greatly, but a number of solutions became so commonplace that an entirely new mark of armor was accidentally invented, retroactively named Mark 5 or heresy armor. 
Mark V is based on the Mark IV template, but its most visible addition is the use of molecular bonding studs. Design uh, that's the thing, that's what they were called. So they were the BDSM things, <laughs> right? That, it's them, right? Trying to reinforce the layers of ceramite against the Astarte's own armor piercing weapons and allow additional layers of ceramite to be added on top. This increased the weight of the suit, requiring the backpack generator to increase its output, which meant that the suits could be uncomfortably hot. The helmet design was also modified, using technologies originally intended for the Terminator armor project and giving Mark V its distinctive mandibles in the form of this mantilla pattern respirator. By the end of the heresy, this patched together sort of armor was one of the most common ones seen. In fact, okay, so the story I said before, it was actually like Mark IV. It was Mark IV, actually, and the cut supply lines, the supply lines were cut during the heresy, so it did not end up really like, getting to all the legions. But no, it's not Mark IV because it doesn't have a big helmet. Mark IV did not have a big helmet. What? In some places it had entered into mainline production to keep up. I'm confused now again because I thought that I, have, I had that whole story about how Mark IV I think it was. Or was it a, is it actually a later one? It cannot be a later one. Oh wait, maybe it's... Uh, okay, that, that, that not, do not get spoilers about the video, but I just wanted to see the design but for a after second. after the heresy, many Imperial forces dismantled these suits as they were resupplied with new ones, considering them... Oh, wait, maybe I'm mixing up stories. Maybe maybe that's the problem. Maybe the problem is that I'm mixing up stories about how um, somebody explained to me this kind of thing again, that the, uh, whatever it was called. Maybe the story was about how the mark before that one was supposed to be delivered to the people, but the supply lines were cut because of the horse heresy. And by the time it, the horse heresy ended, they switched to a new power armor, which is probably this one, because they had to like makeshift together this kind of thing because of the terror deterioration and whatnot. And then the one with the beaks is a whole separate story, maybe. That's what makes sense. And my apologies for mixing them up if that's the case. Ill-omened as well as inefficient, but Mark V still sees heavy use amongst Chaos Space Marine warbands, and its rugged technologies are still employed by the more remote and isolated of Loyalist chapters. As well as the stopgap that was Mark V, the heresy also had effects on the mainline development of Space Marine armor. Mark IV had been intended to be the perfect armor, but Mechanicum research continued. Eventually, yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I think that's the thing. I think that's I think <laughs> I think the thing I said before now. The, the thing I just explained, I think that's the case. The resulting in a suite of advancements that improved overall efficiency and power routing. This prototype suit was originally intended to be called Mark V and was tested by the Raven Guard Legion during the. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Damn it! I keep getting like bamboozled all over the place. So it was supposed to be Mark V. It originally did have a big helmet in that case. That's the prototype. It was sent to the Raven Guard. They to test it, um, but supply lines were cut during the Horus Heresy, and by the time the Horus Heresy ended, by the time you know the things were supposed to be standardized, we switched to another one. But is it Mark V that became the standard, or is it Mark VI? Scaland campaign, which led to it being known as Corvus Armor, named after their Primarch, and then eventually designated as Mark VI. Mark VI armor was the lightest form of mainline. No, so it's Mark. This is Mark 7 that became the standard after in Space Marine power armor. It offered no significant improvements in protection on Mark 4, but its systems were much more modular. It had it, it also had more sensors and stuff, right? Easier to replace and more compatible with the earlier marks. Components could be swapped out easily with less advanced versions in a pinch, and it made good use of the same molecular bonding studs that were seen on Mark 5, this time on the facing shoulder guard. Some of the power cabling was moved back behind the plating, and the armor was quieter than any of the previous versions, which made it particularly suitable for stealth work. The new helmet design with its distinctive conical nose also housed advanced auto sensors. These yeah, suits the first sensors. entered general issue near the very end of the Great Crusade, and every Space Marine Legion made use of them to some degree, but as the heresy broke out, its modular nature, backwards compatibility, and ease of repair meant that it quickly became the more common form of new power armor issued, and the one most commonly seen on the masses of hastily created inductee pressed into service during the war. As a result, it's a relatively common form of armor even in the 41st millennium. At the same time, so it was actually, it was Mark VI that became the standard after Mark IV that many took. We you know what about that story I said. Mark VII armor was being developed on Mars. 
While visually quite different, and with a new helmet design oh, no, that Odin lost the previous Mantilla and Sarum pattern respirators, the new Mark actually shared many of the same components as Mark VI, making them extremely compatible in case of replacement. But Mark VII finally moved all that exposed cabling back underneath its armour, the decorated chest plastron which gave its armour one of its most common names, Aquila or Eagle armour. It's also occasionally called Imperator armour. During the heresy, as Mars fell to the traitors, the Imperial Fists evacuated the stock of Prototype Mark VII and its development teams to Earth, where they continued work, which meant that by the end of the heresy, many of the Loyalist forces defending the palace had been reissued with this mark, and it became something of a symbol for the Loyalist Space Marines. Okay, finally I have my story straight. I have the whole story straight. I have the whole damn story straight. Finally. I said it already, I will not say it again. Just replace the last part about what I said, the new standard that became after that one. Is this one actually? Mark 7. There we go. There we go. Finally. Damn it. It, it took a while to get here, but I'm here finally. Eventually becoming the standard I have the mark of new straight. power armor issued to Space Marine chapters for the next 10,000 years, as much there we a go. symbol of the Imperium as the Space yeah. Marine within it. As the Imperium tried to hold itself together in the wake of the heresy, research and development continued on the armor, but only in a limited form. Mark 8 pattern so armor, small upgrades Aaron after. armor, was a variant of Mark 7 with improved chest and neck plating, but the new raised collar required a new helmet design that made it less compatible with earlier marks, so it only ever saw limited production. It wasn't until way later, during the Indomitus Crusade of the 41st Millennium and the resurrection of the Primark Robut Gearman, yeah, that Space Marine power armor saw its next Gorilla major improvement. Mark 10 power armor was designed ah. in secret by the Mechanica March Majos Belisarius Call for use by the new Primaris Marines. Named Tacticus Armor, Mark 10 is developed from a mixture of technologies taken from many of the older power armor. Wait, Primaris? So what about... Oh, because it is the one with a, with a knee pad thingy, the, short, the sharp knee pad thingy at the top. So it's, you can distinct the Primaris. Marks, including a faceplate that owes a lot to the advanced Mark IV. It's also designed as a modular system. The different armor segments can be swapped out depending on the battlefield role required. The lighter weight elements of the armor, adapted for silent running, can be used to create the Mark X Phobos patterns, used by Reaver and Vanguard Space Marine units, and the addition of heavier plating can turn the armor into the Mark X Gravis pattern, used by Aggressor and Inceptor squads. As oh. Primaris pattern Space Marines become more and more common across the Imperium, Mark 10 has become the new standard pattern of power armor, but the galaxy is a big place and true standardization is so Mark 10 became the, became the standard after practically impossible. There have been loads of lesser known marks or prototype sub patterns over the Imperium's history. Imperial pattern armor was an extremely early variant design with a downsized power pack and conical helmet, much like the later Mark VI. Local forge worlds and chapter armories also developed their own preferred components, particular patterns of helmet or styles of decoration unique to the chapter's culture. And unique artificia suits might be created for specific individuals, like the runic armor used by Space Wolves rune what priests. The? or the Aegis armor worn by the Grey Knights chapter, built from a combination of Mark 6, 7, and 8 designs, and covered in hexagramic wards to protect the wearer against the powers of the warp. Even oh. with the reinforcement of the Space Marine chapters in the 41st millennium, making completely new suits is still an expensive and time-consuming effort for a chapter forge, and so armor's often repaired and reused rather than being replaced. And over the millennia, some of these suits have become revered artifacts of the chapter's past. It's common to see Space Marines clad in a mix of armor marks, and chapters might reserve whole suits of ancient armor for use by honored veterans or elite units. Other chapters make deliberate use of older marks of armor, like the Red Scorpions and Minotaurs, who still retain the ability to produce suits of the advanced Mark IV, or... I mean, many of them have, like, advantages and disadvantages over others, but in the end... It does sound like most of them are still pretty relevant even to today, like for different kinds of space marines and instances. Or chapters like the Carcharodons, who operate far from any resupply and who value the durability the and simplicity arts. of some of the earlier marks. And of course, Shorts. these older marks of armor are still incredibly common amongst the warbands of the Chaos Space Marines. Heretic armor might be derived from millennia-old suits of Mark III or Mark IV plates, modified by the influence of the warp and replaced over time with newer components scavenged from defeated foes or augmented by supplies from Loyalist chapters that have turned renegade since the heresy. And all this might be held together using the same hasty stopgap techniques utilized during the heresy. 
like much of the Imperium's technology, power armor is both a relic of a previous time and a symbol for the power of the Imperium as a whole. It's a technology built from constant rediscovery and innovation over a couple of hundred years, and then largely left untouched as the Imperium stagnated over the next few thousand. And even with the reinforcement granted by the Primaris Marines, that's still the case in the 41st millennium. Power armor and its distinctive silhouette is as much propaganda as it is a defensive system. A status symbol wielded by the Imperium in memory of a past they can't quite reach. Turning from a mass-manufactured, almost disposable asset of conquest to a rare holy relic. Survive yeah, something that they have to repair instead of actually replace to this point. <laughs> It's sad. It's really sad, right? Like how far they've fallen from grace. Living suits carefully husbanded over the millennia, hoarded by the Imperium's wealthiest agencies, and the knowledge of how to create it, like much of the Imperium's technology, carefully guarded lest it be lost again. Thanks for watching. Wait. Would that normal human wear a, like, uh, one of these armors if, it, if it's actually like... um? like mechanical and not just simply a slab of like iron so it actually like has things to make it move not only by your own strength i mean it's kind of big i'm not sure if a normal human would fit in that but still anyway could actually i mean there's stuff like the inquisition and the sisters of battle wearing them but they have like their own versions custom made for them so um could a normal space marine one be worn by a human i wonder i'm very curious about that I know rogue traders have them, but again, I'm not sure if it's Space Marines ones, or again, just like unique smaller ones. I'm curious, but anyway, this was a really educational thing. And if it was you'd so like easy. to see oh. more 40k lore videos, there should be one just popping up there on the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, well, like, oh. subscribe, and there's a link to the Patreon in the thing below. Yeah, that's the, that, 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 that's the thing. It was so easy to follow, so it like, explained so well. All of it was actually like very, very easily digestible. Very, very nice content. Very like very short compared to like um what you'd expect if you think about that many marks of armor. It's I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, thank you for watching this video for now. And if you enjoyed watching it, punch the like button with everything you have, and have a great day or night. But for now, farewell and bye bye.